Hello all, this is Dr. Alsup, and we are going to continue our discussion regarding the pelvis, describing some of the muscles. Now, not, I'm not going to talk about every single skeletal muscle associated with the pelvis. Some of these will be discussed in more detail uh, with the reproduction sequence, but I am going to introduce the piriformis muscle, which can sometimes be considered a lower limb muscle. And then I am going to talk a bit about the pelvic diaphragm or kind of the floor of the pelvic cavity. All right, so let's start with the piriformis muscle. We talked a little bit about the pyris, piriformis muscle when we were talking about the greater sciatic notch, which as we recall, will turn into a foramen with the ligaments there. And so this piriformis muscle actually has its origin or proximal attachment on the sacrum. So it's within the pelvic cavity region. But its distal attachment or its insertion site will actually be on the greater trochanter of the femur. So that means that it crosses the hip joint. So it will directly affect the actions at the hip joint, specifically uh, or, more, or most powerfully associated with lateral rotation of the hip joint. But it will also assist the gluteus medius and minimus in abduction of the hip joint. And you can see right here, the gluteus maximus has been reflected and you can see it's more distal attachment as it's heading towards the greater trochanter. So you can see this here. Now, one thing of note, so this is piriformis. One thing I do want to note here that you can see on this image is you can actually see the sciatic, sciatic nerve that is going to also traverse the greater sciatic foramen inferior to the piriformis. And we talked a bit about this before, but if you have a hypertrophy of the piriformis, this could impinge upon the sciatic nerve, which could cause both sensory as well as motor defects or weaknesses. Okay. Now, one of the, the major muscles that I want to discuss here associated with the pelvis is what's referred to as the pelvic diaphragm, or sometimes you hear this referred to as pelvic floor muscles. Basically, this is what is creating the, the bottom portion of the pelvic cavity. Inferior or more superficial to the pelvic cavity will be perineal muscles. We are not going to talk about perineal muscles in this particular portion of the course. You will talk about this more in the repro portion, but these perineal muscles are going to be very closely associated with many of the erectile bodies associated with the penis or the clitoris. Um, there will be some sphincteric muscles as well. Um, again, that will be discussed in more detail in other portions. Now, this pelvic, the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm muscles are going to play a role in terms of supporting the viscera of the pelvis. And this uh, pelvic diaphragm, as well as the perineal muscles, will allow for certain structures to traverse the region. You'll have a urethral canal. You'll have a vaginal canal in certain individuals. And then you'll have a rectal canal. So you will have spaces within the pelvic floor in order for these structures to be able to traverse. Here we're looking at a um, superior view. This is another superior view here. I think this image over here has a bit more detail than this one. Now, the majority of what's forming the pelvic diaphragm is a, a muscle referred to as the levator ani. You're going to have a right and a left. And often this levator ani is split into various parts based on the structures that it surrounds or the attachment sites that are specific to it. So this levator ani is making up the majority of the pelvic diaphragm, but you also will have a muscle referred to as the coccygeus that will form more of the um, more posterior portion of the pelvic diaphragm. Sometimes you hear this referred to as ischiococcygeus. I don't really think they have a very good representation of that here on this image, but you do see it over here. So all of this right here would be considered part of the levator ani, and then this right here would be coccygeus, and then the most posterior, but was actually exiting the pelvic cavity, would be the piriformis. Now, there is going to be a potential for these muscles to be damaged, particularly during childbirth. Um, or anything large kind of moving through these structures, um, obviously in terms of the, the head of, 
of a baby that is going to, to be a fairly large structure moving through the vaginal canal. And so in certain instances, you can have tearing of these muscles or damage. Specifically, you're going to have the more medial components of the levator ani that could be uh, that could be damaged. So the pubococcygeus, which is close to the vaginal canal, as well as the puborectalis, could have um, some type of damage. Not not always, but that is going to be one of the more commonly injured components of the levator ani. And again, <clears throat> there are other skeletal muscles in this region, specifically these perineal muscles, which are located inferior to the pelvic diaphragm, so more superficial to it. Um, but this, again, will be discussed in the repro portion of the course. All right, excellent. So say during a vaginal delivery of, of a baby, which portion of the levator ani is most sus susceptible to injury? So think about it. And when you're ready, let's discuss. Now, in the most vague terms, let's return back to this picture. In the most vague terms, it's going to be the most medial components of the levator ani. So those portions that are closer to the openings, um, particularly the vaginal canal. If you want to get a bit more specific, you can have damage to this pubococcygeus, which is closest to this vaginal canal region, but you can have continued tearing back towards um, the region that's directly surrounding the rectal canal or the puborectalis as well. So that tear can extend back even posteriorly to affect the, the rectal canal region or the skeletal muscle associated with it. So I guess you can have multiple answers for this. Uh, at least get, I want you to understand that it's the most medial components of the later ani that are most susceptible to injury. All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. As you can see, we're already kind of moving into discussions of the lower limb. So that's where we're going to spend the rest of our time is discussing the bones, of course, the joints, and then can never forget our good friends, the muscles. So I'll see you in the next uh, video and always feel free to reach out with any questions.